is only one thing Jesus is saying to you. Remain in my love. Abide in my love. Be sustained by my love. Be empowered by my love. My love is the energy of your soul, the power of your soul. So don't, and just as I connected to my Father, you connect to me. All of you know that passage, John 15, 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me, I in him. The same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. I snap this little twig from the plant. Do you know something? To the natural eye, it looks as healthy, as green, as vibrant as everything, yes or no? But it has begun to die. That is why if you don't connect to Jesus, you don't connect to his love, don't tell me I'm going for daily mass. Don't tell me I'm praying, I'm going for prayer meeting, reading my Bible. Sorry, it won't work. What are you doing with your will? Have you surrendered your will? Are you consciously, deliberately seeing the need to connect to Jesus? And if you don't connect to Jesus, you can pray till doomsday, your soul is drying, you'll be a miserable Christian. There'll, there'll be no let up to the trials, the disappointments, the hurts, the anxieties, the fears. They're just tearing your soul apart. And why, am I a Christian then? Is that what Jesus came to give us? Jesus has come to me only that labor and heavenly burden. I will give you rest, he says. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We go around, we charismatics go around and that. Burden, trouble. You think you will attract anyone to Jesus? They look at your face and they'll say, Man, then you keep your Jesus to yourself. Let me see a vibrant, let me see a smiling, let me see a, 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 a see on fire. What's in your soul will radiate on your face. You can't hide, you can't camouflage. People can see through the camouflage. And that is a counter witness. And then nothing, then, then you, you do more damage to the kingdom. Because one way we are talking, talking about Jesus, and next time we are living a contradictory life. And the people see that contradiction and they get turned off. So, okay, I begin to do this, and then, in my hunger and search for God, I'm continually thirsting for Jesus, how to connect more deeply, how to grow in Him. I'm studying the teaching of Pope Benedict when he was poor. Every Thursday, I don't know which day, Thursday, Wednesday, whatever it is, once a week, the Pope teaches the church, the whole church, he gives a message. And Pope Benedict was expounding the spirituality of the doctors of the church. So I happened to come across his teaching on St. John of the Cross. So I was reading his teaching on the spirituality of St. John of the Cross, and, and this is the last paragraph. Those of you who want to know what it is, just put Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, St. John of the Cross on Google and you'll get the whole teaching, what he's talking about St. John of the Cross. When I read this last paragraph, I said, wow! This is what Jesus is telling us to do. This is what St. John of the Cross has understood and he's teaching this. Now mind you, St. John of the Cross he was trying to reform the Carmelite order. And, and, the, and, and the monks were so furious with him, they didn't want to reform, they didn't want to change. So do you know what they did to him? If I'm not mistaken, they put him in prison for nine months. And twice a week they would get him out of the prison and beat him. And finally he escaped from the window. And it was there in the prison that the light of God shone in his heart and he's giving the church till the end of time priceless teachings. Some of the teachings of St. John of the Cross and Teresa of Avila. They were the two greatest reformers of the Carmelite order. And see what St. John of the Cross says. If a man has a great love within him, it's as if this love gives him wings and he endures life's problems more easily 
because he has in himself that light which is faith to be loved by God and to let oneself be loved by God in Christ Jesus. In simple words, St. John of the Cross is saying, that person who allows himself to be loved by God, to be loved by Jesus, that person gets wings and he's able to rise above the trials and difficulties that come his way. Without the love of God, we are overcome. With the love of God, we are overcomers. Have you understood? See the next line. This, this act of allowing oneself to be loved is a light that helps us carry our daily burdens, Jesus. This act, now act, what does act mean? See, sisters and brothers, when we go to sleep, what do we do? We pull all the blinds, yes or no? First thing in the morning, what do you do? You pull the blinds, because if you don't pull the blinds, the light doesn't come, you continue living in darkness. And life becomes so uncomfortable. And so, so, so the John of the Cross says, this act, what is the act? He says, daily open yourself to the love of God. Let the warmth of God's love warm your soul, energize your soul, heal your soul, empower your soul to live this supernatural life of following Jesus. And holiness is not our work, our difficult work, but rather it is precisely this openness. See, holiness is, is a work of grace. And that is holiness. Holiness comes when I allow myself to be loved by God. Listen, what is holiness? Holiness basically is imitating Jesus. That is why Jesus says in John 14, 15, in John 14, 15, Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So my obedience to Jesus is directly proportional to my experience of his love. The more I experience his love, the more I can obey him, and the more I obey him, the more am I becoming holy. So John of the Cross is saying, holiness is not our work, our impossible work. It is nothing else but opening yourself to the love of God. Do not forget God, because it is precisely in opening oneself to His light that strength is found, as well as the joy of the redeemed. Don't forget the love of God, he says. Open your soul daily to His love, because you get the strength of God and the joy of the redeemed. And then finally he says, let us pray to the Lord so that he will help us find this sanctity. It's a grace. Say, Lord, that's, you know, sisters and brothers, believe it or not, if you really understand, the only, the only, only thing you must pray for, cry out for, daily is, fill me with your love, fill me with your love. Jesus, flood me with your love. Connect me to your love. It's your love that's the breath of my soul. It's the love that gives the strength. It's the love that gives me energy. It's the love that does everything for me. Love, 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 love. He says, pray. Let us pray to the Lord so that he will help us find the sanctity. Now listen carefully to this. To allow ourselves to be loved by God, which is the vocation of us all, as well as being true redemption. He says, this is your prime vocation. Through your baptism, God has brought you into his family primarily to be loved by him. If the husband doesn't connect to the love of God, and the wife doesn't connect to the love of God, our love for each other dries up. And marriage, marriage life becomes difficult, impossible, unbearable, suffering. Wife is selfish, husband is selfish. How can our marriage ever work out? God is the author of marriage. Adam and Eve, listen, Adam and Eve were created primarily to be loved by God so that in turn 
they would love him and the fruit of that love for him would be obedience. But they chose to disobey. And that poison of disobedience has infected you and me. And so Jesus has given his life, listen carefully, Jesus has given his life for us mainly to connect you and me back to the Father's love. So that once again I can be loved by my Father. Now we haven't understood this. Now for me, whatever a saint may say, I want more scripture, more proof of scripture. So scripture is God's word. After all, a saint is only echoing what he's experiencing from the word of God. So I'm searching the scriptures. Now look at this beautiful scripture. John chapter 17, 25, 26. These are the last words of Jesus before he enters his passion. So Jesus is praying to the Father. 26 is the last verse. Then he goes into John 18 and, and 18 starts Jesus crosses the Kidron Valley along with his disciples and enters the Garden of Gethsemane and there starts his agonizing passion. And he's praying to the Father. I'll read verse 25. 25 and 26. 25 and 26 Jesus says, O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these men you have given me know that you have sent me. And I'm really saying, Father, the world has, the, 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 the nation has not recognized me as the Messiah, but these men know, they have a partial revelation that I've come from you. Now see what verse 26 says. Beautiful. In fact, the whole incarnation is encapsulated in this one word. Why did Jesus come? See what he says. He's praying to his father. He says, I've made known thy name to them and will make it known to them that the love with which thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them, he says. He says, Father, I've been faithful to the mission you entrusted me. And what was that mission? Make known to the people of God, I am their father. Now, name in scripture, that my name is Fritz, it tells you nothing about me. But name in scripture embodies the person, the vocation, the character, the being, the essence, everything. And Jesus brings the revelation to the Jewish nation saying, God is father. That's why the Jews wanted to kill him. They say, you blaspheme. In calling God your father, you are making yourself equal to God. You need to be done away with. And Jesus kept on, especially when you read the Gospel of John, Jesus is continually talking of the father, father, father. Finally, at the Last Supper, Philip turns to Jesus. Jesus shows the father. Who is his father? Because one picture is about a thousand words. So is his father. And then Jesus says to Philip, Philip, you, you, you've been so long with me and you haven't seen the father? Who's ever seen me seen the father? I and the father are one. I am the perfect revelation of who the father is. So Jesus says, listen again, I have made known to them thy name and will make it known to them. In other words, sisters and brothers, what does it mean to be a Christian? What does it mean to be a Catholic? In other words, all my life, from the day I encounter Jesus, if I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to work in my life, if I'm yielding to God's life, I ought to be having an ongoing revelation of my Father, not just words, not just theory, but in my day-to-day -day life, I am experiencing the favor, the love, the protection, the wisdom, the provision, everything of my Father. You know, I met Jesus in 1972. To the, I thank God, thank God. When Jesus touched me, he, whoop, he hit me. And that touch of Jesus in 1972 has lasted me all these 48 years and will last me till my last breath. Yeah. 
And in 1976, Jesus told me, leave now and devote your life entirely. So I started my work in 1976. And I thank God it happened. I'm telling you about the father. And I'm working with a beautiful Jesuit priest. And I thank God he did what he did. At that time, I, I was getting irritated. I was getting angry. Because he said, let's go here, go here, go there, go there. But never give me one rupee. And my little saving, I left my job with a saving of 25,000 rupees. My mother needed 15,000. I gave it to her. What will 10,000 rupees do? Those days it was something. It lasted me some time. And it's going, 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 going. You know, I'm getting anxious. I'm saying, God, how am I going to live? I can't go to my parents. My parents would have kicked me and said, get back to your ship and work. Who would ask you to do this work? You say, Jesus, Jesus, and now you're coming to earth for money? So then he sent me to a distant seminary. As I was going to that seminary, I was grumbling, grumbling, grumbling. So Jesus said, Lord, what do I do? How do I live? I need something to live by. And then he began to speak to me. You know what he said to me? He says, Fritz, you go to the seminary? I said, yes, Lord. Do they give you a room to stay? I said, yes, Lord. Do they give you food to eat? I said, yes, Lord. What more are you looking for? The day you look for money in this work, I'll take my hands off your life. <gasps> and, oh, Lord, you showed me my dirty heart. Forgive, 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 forgive. He says, when I sent my disciples two by two, I told them, don't make a slave, don't take a purse, go. I'll open a home, stay. Be content with what they give you. Bless them, go to another home. And then he spoke the most beautiful words at the very start of my full-time work. And you know what those words were? He said to me, my father has called you to do this work and from today onwards you will only speak to my father and tell him what you need. Forty-two years, living entirely on divine providence. And in all these forty-two years, I've asked for financial help three times. Twice because the Lord told me to ask. Go and ask so-and-so for certain help. And the third time, when I was in Philippines, the school fees were so high, I could have trusted God, he would have met my needs. I took a shortcut, so I went up to one of the ladies I knew so well, and I said, do you mind taking a little love offering for me towards the school fees of my children? That's all. I've raised three girls, running a family. You know what it cost to live? So, I made known to them thy name. So you have to discover in reality, God is your father. You live a carefree life, a peaceful life. Which child is anxious about food, shelter, clothing, school fees, tuition, music fees, football game? No. They are just basking in the love and care of mama and dada. And that is, that is who you are. You are a daughter of God, a son of God. God is your father. And so Jesus sacrificed his life for me to reconnect to the father. What an amazing life. Believe me as I stand here before you today, there's always something in my pocket. Not just enough for me, but enough to give to others. Blessing others all the time. As God blesses me, I give. I've got missionaries. I, I love lay missionaries. The moment I come across a lay missionary, I say, Lord, he needs. And there it goes, and I say, take. I say, May God bless you. Thank you. You're serving Jesus. I know it takes money to serve Jesus. Take and bless him. 
And this supply keeps going on and on and on. Never stops. 42 years it never stopped. It will never ever stop. Remember the story of the woman with the, with the jug of oil? That is God. Beautiful. Okay. Now, write down the scripture quickly, quickly, quickly. Romans 8, 35, 38. Romans 8, 35, 38. St. Paul says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, hunger, thirst, no, as it is written, we are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. Then he says, no, in all these things, what is he referring to? Persecution, trials, famine, nakedness, peril, sword. He says, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us, he says. Nothing in all of creation, high depth, length, breadth, angels, principality, nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of Christ, the love of God in Christ Jesus. What made St. Paul, St. Paul, St. Paul was in a continual connection with the love of God and that love energized him, empowered him, enlightened him with everything for him and he could so faithfully serve Jesus and lay down his life for Jesus. Same thing for you and for me. Ephesians chapter 3, 14 to 18. See what St. Paul says. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. Now see what St. Paul is praying for you. Make that prayer your prayer. He says according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you be strengthened with might in the inner man, inner woman. Paul is saying Pray to God that he will strengthen the inner man, inner woman, by the Holy Spirit. So call upon the Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, come, 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 strengthen me, strengthen me, strengthen me. Next. And that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, may have the power to comprehend with all the saints, the breadth, the length, the height, the depth, to know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge and be filled with the fullness of God. Now unto him, by the power at work within us, is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask us. Paul is saying, my prayer for you, as you acknowledge the indwelling Christ, you will discover the length, the breadth, the height, the depth, to know that infinite love of God that surpasses all understanding. That's all he thinks. Sisters and brothers, cry out for this love. Long for this love. Open yourselves in this love. Because this love is the energy, is the breath of your soul. And it is this love that will be able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think. Believe it or not. You are sitting here. If you surrender to Jesus, you open yourself to the love of God. I, you can't even imagine what God can do in and through you. You can't imagine. And I'm a, I'm a witness. I'm a very quiet man. You meet me out of this pulpit and you see me out there. I'm, I, I'm in the back seat. I don't, I'm not an extrovert. I'm not a great talker. I'm not a great social. I'm, I'm quiet. But when I come here, I'm another man. The Holy Spirit just takes over. And what I'm speaking to you is from my heart, not from my head. Yeah. It's all real in my life. And that's why I, 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 I speak so strongly. Now quickly, quickly, one more scripture. And that is 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3, verse 5. There St. Paul will say, listen carefully. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the faithfulness of Christ. By God's grace, cry out to God, may God direct your heart to the love of God. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there lies your heart. And because of my fallen nature, my heart is on this level. It goes to the creature. 
By, by nature it doesn't go to the Creator. And this is a problem. So he says, may, by the, uh, 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 may the Lord, it's a grace, it's a gift, may the Lord direct your heart. Let it rise above all the other attachments, all the other attractions. Don't let them to block your heart. From what? Don't prevent all these attachments and, and attractions, whatever it is on this level. Block your heart from soaring. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the faithfulness of Christ. You are my father and I am your son. I am loved by you. Every facet of my life. Even a hair on my head is taken into account by your loving, caring, healing, freeing, providing and sanctifying love. I have nothing to be anxious about. So I abandon myself to your love and care and I find my peace and rest in you my father, in you Jesus my good shepherd and in you Holy Spirit my comforter and guide. You see, our lives are full of anxieties, full of fears, full of uncertainties, and all making us anxious. Anxiety is a sin. Anxiety amounts to saying, God, you're not faithful, you don't care for me, I can't trust you, I can't depend on you, you can't solve my problem. That is what anxiety is. And so scripture says, be anxious about nothing. But in everything with prayer, supplication and thanksgiving, make your request known unto God and the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The sign that you are trusting God is peace. Okay, now pray. Join your hands. You've just said that prayer to the Father. Now let every anxiety, every fear Every insecurity just melt away. You've got nothing to worry about. You're a little child in the arms of the father. And the father is saying to you, my son, my daughter, don't worry. I'm your daddy. I love you. I will resolve what is troubling you. I will free you from what's troubling you. I'll heal you. I'll care for you. I'll provide for you. I am your father. Let go of every anxiety. For some of us, it, it's a struggle. Anxiety has so gripped you. Fears have so enslaved you. Needs have so overcome you that letting go is not easy. But persist in letting go, letting go, letting go. Let go and allow the Father to take over. And eventually, when you're by the grace of God, you rid yourself of everything that disturbs you, then and then alone, peace will come. When that peace has come, you are now doing what Jesus tells you to do. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. And having found peace in the Father's love and care and watchfulness, quickly go to Jesus. And like David say, Lord Jesus, you are my shepherd. Nothing I shall want. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Deep peace. You're just a dumb sheep. Jesus is a good shepherd. He lays his life down for you. And in that deep peace just go to the Holy Spirit and thank him in faith that he will continue healing you, comforting you, and guiding you. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. 